Okay, this sermon is entitled, Doing the Will of God in Our Daily Lives. I'd like to open up with prayer, and then with a few verses. All right, dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Psalm 108 reads, O God, my heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise, even with my glory. Awake, psaltery and harp. I myself will awake early. I will praise thee, O Lord, among the people, and I will sing praises unto thee among the nation. Now let's turn over to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. In Ecclesiastes chapter 3, we see in verse 17, it reads, I said in mine heart, God shall judge the righteous and the wicked, for there is a time there for every purpose and for every work. Now, obviously, doing the will of God, in this sense, is to to carry out God's purpose in your life. And we're going to look at that in a minute. But first, I'd like to discuss what the will of God is pertaining to salvation. Turn over to Matthew chapter 7. Matthew chapter 7. I'm going to, I'm going to clear this up because this can get confusing to some people, especially the false prophets out there that are, are lost. They don't even know what the will of God is. But it clears it up here. It says in verse 21, Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So what is the will of God pertaining to salvation? John chapter 6, it reads in verse 40, it says, And this is the will of him that sent me. And of course, when it says him, it's referring to God the Father. It says that every one which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at the last day. So the will of God is to believe on on Jesus Christ. Now jump back to verse 39. It talks about God's will in another sense. It says, And this is the Father's will, which hath sent me, that of all which he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. It's God's will to keep us saved. See, people talk about losing salvation, but that's not even a a legitimate subject. The, The question should be, will God lose us? And the answer is no. God does not lose anybody who is saved, and it's his will to keep us saved. So when it comes to salvation... It has to do with, you know, God saving us and us believing on Jesus Christ. But what about the will of God in our daily lives? The Bible talks about this in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, and it reads, Paul, called to be an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God, and Sothenes, our brother, unto the church of God, which is at Corinth, to them that are sanctified in Christ Jesus, called to be saints, with all that in every place call upon the name of Jesus Christ our Lord, both theirs and ours, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I think the significance of these verses are that, in some cases, God's will in your life is to change vocations. Okay, In this case, the Apostle Paul was just that. He was an apostle that was called by Jesus Christ through the will of God. And I believe that for some people, God wants you to be, you know, a preacher or a soul winner or something along those lines. But a lot of people, they just want to know what God's will in their life is, and they want it to be something temporary or something that they can just do that's just a slight modification of what they're already doing. And a lot of times this never happens, and the reason why is because that's not what God's will is. Let's turn over to 2 Corinthians chapter 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, we're also going to see why some people never carry out God's will. Let's start off with verse 5. It says, And this they did, not as we hoped, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Now stop right there. What this says is that sometimes God just wants you to give, you know, your life to, to him and to others. We're not talking about salvation. Obviously, salvation is free. Salvation is based on the fact that Jesus Christ gave his life for us. But this is a secondary issue. This is like an issue of service. We should give our lives to the Lord, and unto others. That would be self-sacrifice. And it says that it's by the will of of God. Okay? Insomuch that we desired Titus, that as as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. As we keep reading these verses, we're going to see in verse um, 11 why some people never carry out God's will. It says in verse 7, Therefore, as ye abound in everything, in faith, and utterance, and knowledge, and in all diligence, and in your love to us, See that you abound in this grace also. I speak not commandment, but by occasion of the, of the forwardness of others, and to prove the sincerity of, of your love. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. And herein I give my advice, for this is, this is expedient for you, who have begun before, not only to do, but also to be forward a year ago. Now we see the concept of doing. See, a lot of people, they want to know what God's will is, but they really don't want to do it. So let's take a look at verse 11. It tells you why they don't. It says, Now therefore perform the doing of it, that as there was a readiness to will, 
So there may be a performance also out of that which you have. The key is people are just not ready. They're not preparing themselves to, to do God's will. And that's why it never happens, because we need to get ready. A lot of people, they want to preach, but they don't have any material. They don't read their Bible enough. A lot of people, they want to go out and win souls to Christ, but they don't have any, any, any handouts, or they don't know the verses. And it's really quite sad. So it tells us right there that we need to be ready so that, that we can perform you know, out of you know, that which we have. Just take what you have and, and start utilizing it. So this is another reason why people do not do the will of God is because they're not ready. Now, one of the ways to get ready is found in 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, it says in verse um, 20, But in a great house there are not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, and some to honor and some to dishonor. If a man therefore purge himself of, of, from these, he shall be a vessel unto honor, sanctified in meat for the master's use, and prepared unto every good work. What we get from this is that sometimes, in order to carry out God's will, in order to, in order to carry out His good work, we have to get rid of things in our lives. We have to get rid of the television set that's keeping us preoccupied with worldliness. And we need to get rid of different distractions in our lives. And that's the only way we're going to carry out God's will, in some cases. So, that's pretty much all I have. The bottom line is that, in order to carry out God's will in our life, we need to be self-sacrificial, we need to be ready... And we need to get rid of things that are going to cause us to stumble, like stumbling blocks, different impediments. So that's all I have. Dear God, thank you for giving us your clear word. Thank you for allowing us to see what it says. Bless the listeners. I ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.